Akane Nishino is a young and upcoming actress who wasn't necessarily too happy with her current life, but still hid behind a mask and faked her cheerful persona. Nishino truly despised other people at her school, but one guy who ticked her off the most was Minoru Kageno. Minoru was the most basic guy who had nothing too special about him, yet for some reason he never paid attention to Nishino despite her sitting next to Minoru for the past three months. Nishino was playing the popular girl at school to hide from some of her traumatic past, and the fact that Minoru didn't even remember her name bothered her every day at school. On a busy day, Nishino had a lot to do at school, but her popularity puts her in some real trouble again. Some thugs take Nishino's driver out while she was at school, and by forcing her to walk home, they get the perfect chance at kidnapping her. While Nishino was being taken away, the last thing she saw was Minoru's face, and by the time the anesthetic wore off, she found herself in an abandoned warehouse. The thugs had kidnapped Nishino for some ransom, and while they had a hold of her, these thugs try to have their way with her as well. After one of the thugs mentioned how Nishino was molested by her first kidnapper, the poor girl starts breaking down, but luckily for her, a masked guy pulls up to fight for her. The guy called himself Stylish Rufian Slayer, and he immediately started going after the thugs with the use of his crowbars. Slayer looked like a trained individual, but he barely managed to win the fight as one of the thugs was a trained military professional. Slayer releases Nishino afterwards, and while looking back on the fight, he takes off his mask and reveals himself to be none other than Minoru. Minoru wasn't happy with how tough this fight was for him after so much training, but he managed to save Nishino's life regardless. Nishino returned back to school after recovering, and the first thing she noticed was how Minoru remembered her name this time around. Nishino felt a connection with Minoru at that moment but she never got the chance to confirm anything as later that day, Minoru died in a road accident. A flashback showed, however, that since he was little, Minoru always wanted to become something like the cold and strong fictional characters he looked up to, but despite all the training he put himself through, the human body's limitations only allowed him to go so far. Minoru wished to live a life just like he fantasized when a ray of hope comes his way and he gets teleported into a completely different world where he had a chance at becoming the eminence in shadow, just like he always wanted. Minoru was reincarnated in another world as a noble's child named Sid Kagino. Sid's new life was similar to something that he always wanted, as this world had magic as a commodity. Sid kept all of his previous memories, so he continued to train to keep up with his previous life, and even though on the surface he was way worse than his sister, Claire, at night Sid played a vigilante and was able to become Shadow, killing bandits who tainted the nights. On a usual mission, Sid ends up finding a rotten blob of flesh from a bandit camp, and while experimenting on it, he removes a curse and the blob transforms into an elven girl. Sid just wanted to have fun with his life, so he made up a story about how he is a descendant of an ancient hero, and his purpose is to fight against the cult of the demon Diablos, who were intending to revive their leader. Sid named the girl Alpha, and even though he was just playing, Alpha took the story seriously and became the first member of Sid's secret cult, the Shadow Garden. Three years passed by after Sid found Alpha, and by now, Claire had turned 15. According to the rulebook of nobles, Claire was supposed to join the Midgar Academy of Dark Knights, but just before her departure, she ends up getting kidnapped. Sid still wasn't serious about the Shadow Garden, but in the past three years, Alpha had recruited more girls in the team and had formed the Shadow Seven. Sid and the Shadow Seven head over for Claire's rescue after the girls confirmed that the Cult of Diablos was the one behind the kidnapping. While the girls were securing Claire, Sid refuses to accept the fact that the cult of Diablos was actually a thing now and play along like a bandit hunter. Sid gets lost in the underground and he happens to run into one of the stronger cultists who he easily obliterates. Shadow Garden successfully saves Claire and after coming back home, she finally departs for her journey at the academy. Sid was still only 13, so he was thinking about working on the Shadow Garden, but his planning goes a little wrong when the Shadow Seven suddenly announced that they will be leaving. The girls told Sid that they wanted to spread out so they can eliminate cultists all around the globe, and even though the girls were not lying, Sid thinks that they must have finally had enough of this childish role-playing game. 
Two more years passed by after the Shadow Seven split up, and now as Sid had also turned 15, he heads over to the royal capital to enroll in Midgar Academy. Sid grew up to be an average guy, just like he always wanted, and that gave him the luxury to live the life of a background character. Sid stayed at the cheapest inn, took public transport, and even made friends with two of the most ordinary guys, Skell and Poe. Everything was going perfectly, and no one had really bothered Sid for a few months now. Sid had recently scored really low on a test, and as a penalty, his friends told him to confess to the most popular girl at school. This girl was the proud princess of Midgar named Alexia, and for Sid, her personality was just perfect. Sid pulled off the most pathetic confession a guy can think of, and was certain that he would be rejected. But, for some reason, Alexia accepted to go out with him. Sid couldn't believe what just happened, and soon enough, the whole school started talking about just how mid he is when compared to Alexia. Sid tried to do dumb stuff so Alexia would dump her, but he soon realized that Alexia was a sneaky little schemer herself. Alexia invited Sid to her fencing class, where he found out about her being engaged with the royal instructor Xenon. Sid understood that Alexia hated Xenon, so he continued to play her little game. During sparring, Sid analyzed that Alexia had the most ordinary fencing skills, and she was nothing compared to her prodigy sister Iris. This inferiority complex was part of the reason Alexia acted so bitter and selfishly. Alexia clearly despised Xenon, and when Sid later confronted her about his place in her engagement, she accepted that she just wants to use him. Alexia pays Sid money for literally being her pet, and looking at how he grabbled that gold coin, bro seemed to be waiting for this moment his whole life. The pair continued this fake relationship for two more weeks, and after getting to know Alexia more, Sid told her how even though her fencing is average, he liked her style. Sid genuinely was trying to compliment her, but Alexia gets offended and leaves after breaking their relationship. Sid was relieved that he can return to being an NPC, but things went quite the opposite way and he found himself getting arrested by Xenon as Alexia had allegedly gone missing after last night. In a hidden facility, Alexia opened her eyes and came to know that she was locked up in a cell right next to a mutated girl. A mad doctor enters her cell with some equipment, and reveals how Alexia was brought here specifically for collecting her royal blood. Elsewhere, Sid was locked up in a torture room, where two knights were beating him up. Sid wasn't really feeling any pain due to his powers, but he still kept on the act of a useless NPC. While Sid was enjoying another one of his little role plays, Alexia had been mentally broken down by that doctor, who revealed that he wanted her blood to conduct experiments on the mutant in the next cell. Some time passes by, and Alexia's sister, Iris, who was in charge of this whole operation, tells Xenon to let Sid go as he most probably was innocent. By the time Sid was released from custody, Alexia had been left absolutely devastated by that madman. Sid heads straight for his place, where he finds Alpha waiting for him. After their reunion, Alpha helps Sid relax for a while, and she explained the intel Shadow Garden had gathered. Alpha reasoned how Alexia would be alive due to the value her blood has, and while keeping this into consideration, she reveals that she will start looking for a location alongside dealing with some cultists. Sid is again dreaming about becoming the Eminence and Shadow, when Beta arrives to let him know about the preparations being completed. Beta reveals that the Shadow Garden had grown to 114 loyal members, and Sid still assumes that they're roleplaying with no idea of how real the Shadow Garden had become. Sid tags along with the rest just to have fun, and while they're getting close to Alexia's location, the Mad Doctor prepares to conduct his experiment. Despite Alexia's warning, the Doctor injects the mutant girl with her blood, and that transforms her into a scary monster. The mutant releases Alexia before running out herself, and on her way out, Alexia runs into her beloved instructor, Xenon. Xenon accepts that this was all a part of his plan to gain a higher knight ranking, and, disgusted by the gesture, Alexia tries to fight this despicable human. The duel was already obvious, and Alexia's ordinary fencer skills stood no chance against someone like Xenon. Xenon has had enough of this little game, and he is about to finish it, but the story takes a little twist, and Sid walks in, dressed in the darkest black, introducing himself as the one who lurks in shadows. Xenon recognizes Sid as the head of the Shadow Garden, and he reveals himself as a core member of the Diablo's cult to commence the duel. 
Out in the city, the monster from earlier was rampaging all around, and to buy time for evacuating citizens, Iris joins the battle. Iris was trying to cut the monster down as fast as she could, but Alpha jumps in and reveals that Iris is only bringing this mutant girl more pain. Alpha gives the monster a merciful death and leaves the scene after introducing herself as a member of the Shadow Garden. Back to Sid. The fight was really nothing for Sid at all, and while spectating him, Alexia finally finds the fencing style she wanted to master ever since she was a kid. Despite all of Xenon's efforts, Sid was just that much superior to him and that led him to go as far as consuming a demonic pill to borrow some more power. After watching Xenon try so hard, Sid decides to flex some of his own skills too and he uses his magic to create a nuclear explosion that blows Xenon up and a big chunk of the evacuated city. Sid escaped the scene without Alexia being able to see through his disguise and she later reunites with Iris, finally burying the hatchet. A few days pass by and after recovering, Alexia takes Sid to a side for some private conversation. Seeing Shadow's fencing style had gotten Alexia determined to master it, and since Sid earlier mentioned that he likes her style, the princess shoots her shot and asks Sid to date her, for real. Sid rejecting her takes her by surprise, and she got quite a bit violent there, to say the least. Anyway, the girls at Shadow Garden were ecstatic at Sid's display of power, but they didn't have the luxury of taking a backseat as a fake Shadow Garden had already appeared in town and they were committing crimes under the name of their beloved master. The royal capital was also recovering from Sid's fight, but since the cults had already caught Iris' attention, the princess decides to do her own investigation and she prepares to form a team to suppress their movement. The fake Shadow Garden was committing murders at a rapid pace, and after looking at the situation, Iris requested some help from a fellow student. Iris meets a girl named Cherie and convinces her to help the Crimson Order with her extraordinary researching skills. Sid, on the other hand, was getting by just fine when his friends took him to the finest chocolate establishment in town. The waiting line was too long, and while looking around, a worker approaches Sid and takes him for a survey of establishment. Inside, Sid finds out that the company was being run by his subordinate, Gamma, and she had been so successful with these chocolates that she was able to gather over 1 billion zen, liquid. Gamma also told Sid about how they have branches all over the world, and while Sid was still thinking that this was another roleplay, it turns out that this guy had become one of the wealthiest men in the world without even knowing. Before Sid leaves, he meets the Shadow Garden's latest member named Nu, and outside, as Sid was going back with the homies, he detects something and tells the others to continue without him. Sid had noticed Alexia fighting the fake Shadow Garden, and just when she was getting overwhelmed by the murderers, Sid told her to stay out of Shadow Garden's way and handed over one of the murderers to Nu so she can interrogate him. On the next day, Alexia told Iris about how she believed that the real Shadow Garden wasn't involved in any of this. Iris still found the cults to be dangerous, so she continued her operation to make sure that her kingdom was safe. Sid gets back with the boys, and as she had grabbed a few chocolates from Gamma, he gives them to Skell and Poe. Both guys try to use the chocolates for confessions, but neither of them is able to succeed. Sid still had some chocolates left on him, so he chooses to give them to a random student, who just happened to be Sherry. Later, Sherry was in her research room, eating them, when her adoptive father, Ruslan, saw the chocolates and told Sherry that Sid was probably confessing to her and that she shouldn't keep the guy waiting. On the next day, Sid was on his way to school when New approached them to reveal the results of her interrogation. The pair sat down on a beach and New explained how the murderer they captured earlier was merely a foot soldier that was brainwashed into killing people through drugs. Furthermore, Nu also revealed how another cult soldier named Rex was also spotted in the city, and while she was trying to explain the possible approaches, Sid was preoccupied with his own thoughts. Sid's friend had convinced them to take part in the Academy's sword festival, so they can impress girls. But while Sid is rambling about all this, Nu just assumes that Sid joined the festival to hunt Rex down, and she starts feeling proud for choosing a life built on truth. The festival arrives pretty soon, and while Skell and Poe had lost all of their money in gambling, Sid gets matched up with Oriana Kingdom's Princess Rose. Sid didn't want to actually try and win the duel, but to make things more dramatic, he used a few tricks up his sleeve to fake getting hurt. 
Sid thought that this made him look like a background character, which was pretty cool, and by now, all of us knew that Sid preferred things to be low-key like that. Anyway, the bout continued for a good few rounds, and Sid gained Rose's respect, despite deliberately losing the duel. Sid was heading back to chill for some time, when Sherry wishes to have a word with him, and asks him to befriend her. Sherry wanted to be friends with Sid, before considering dating, and Sid just agreed with whatever she wanted, without even bothering to listen to her. Regardless, Sherry was happy with the outcome, and to satisfy her curiosity, she reached out to Alexia. Alexia invites Sherry for a coffee, and Sherry asks her about her relationship with Sid. Alexia accepts that she was just faking it with Sid, and while it was a sigh of relief for Sherry, Alexia on the other hand seemingly felt uneasy after coming to know that Sherry is interested in someone as average as Sid. Sid was in class like usual, when an election for a student council seat was announced. But around the same time, cultist Gaunt Knight decided to attack the academy, and he casts an anti-magic barrier. The fake Shadow Garden members run in, and while trying to fight, Rose gets overwhelmed due to not having magic. Rose was about to get hurt badly when Sid jumps in and receives a dangerous blow while saving her. With the academy in some serious trouble, and Sid still trying to act cool, the tension buildup leaves us wondering what would happen next. And that brings us to the end of today's recap. Thanks for sticking till the end, and let us know in the comments if you guys want a second part of the series. Don't forget to leave us a like and subscribe to the channel for more content like this, and we'll see you in the next one. Peace.